Hi there everyone and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a battery testing shootout. We're going to be looking at 5 inch freestyle and racing packs 6S from 1200 to 1800 milliamp hours and we've got six different manufacturers represented. We're going to be looking at Bonker, Boss Lipo, China Hobby Line, Dogcom, the FPV and Zot Power and there are some packs in here which are really great value and perform really really well. And there are some packs in here that you are definitely going to want to avoid. So there's a lot to cover in this video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If at any point during this video, you decide you'd like to pick up some of these batteries for your own quad, there are links down in the video description to where you can get them. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you click through and make any purchase, I receive a small referral commission from the retailer. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps support me to buy more batteries for the next battery shootout. So please do use those links if you possibly can. All right, let's dive into the test data now, starting with the constant power discharge test. Here we are taking the packs from 4.2 volts per cell, fully charged, all the way down to 3.1 volts per cell, completely empty, over about four minutes. And we're doing that by calculating a constant power as the nominal voltage of the pack, which is 22.2 volts for a 6S LiPo, times 15 C. That will discharge the pack to completely empty in about four minutes, which is very typical of an FPV freestyle flight. I know there are some of you in the comments who can drain a LiPo in two minutes, um, but four minutes is more typical and is fast enough to show up any packs which are not gonna handle the C rating that we need in FPV. And as you can see, we have a load of packs um, that are performing kind of very similarly in terms of the shape of the discharge curve. And they all have different capacities. So some are up around sort of 1700 milliamp hours, some more like 1200 milliamp hours. But there are just a couple of packs which have a very, very different shape and drop off very early at about 1100 milliamp hours. These are the Zot Power 1800s, and we're going to be talking about them a lot in this video. Um, but as you can see, they already look very different to the other packs that we've tested. Let's start by looking at the tested capacity versus the rated capacity. And this is a great chart for just understanding the quality of the pack and also if the manufacturer really understands the FPV use case. In FPV, we care about the usable capacity under a fast discharge. Often LiPos are rated at a 1C discharge. So they discharge them very slowly over an hour and that's the number that they print on the pack. That is pretty much irrelevant for FPV because we are always discharging much, much faster than that. And we care about how much capacity we can get out of the pack at that faster discharge rate. For example, let's look at the Zot Power 1800. It might deliver 1800 milliamp hours under a slow 1C discharge, but under a 15C discharge like we do in FPV, less than 1100. It's, it's like basically half or a little bit more than half its rated capacity. So it's a huge difference that you are definitely going to notice in flight. If you compare that to the Bonker Dandelion 1680, this pack is actually delivering more than its rated capacity under a 15C discharge. And that goes to show that um, the manufacturer kind of understands our use case and they're rating the pack for the usable capacity that you can get out of it under a fast discharge, which is what we care about. Um, standout performance here, you know, Bonker, Boss Lipo, Dogcom, um, VFPV, and uh, CNHL actually, all of them are rating the packs pretty appropriately for what you can get out of them under a fast discharge. Um, Zot Power, not so much. They're clearly rating their packs for a slower discharge and they're not performing quite so well under a fast discharge. So it's just something to be aware of in terms of um, just making sure that you don't just go based on the number printed on the pack, but you also think about how much usable capacity you're going to be able to get out of it. But of course, we don't just care about the capacity of the pack. We also care about the voltage that it's able to maintain during discharge. Ideally, we'd like a pack that maintains a really high voltage during the whole of the discharge curve, all the way to 100% capacity, and then falls off a cliff. A higher voltage means more RPM at the prop, more performance, and a more dynamic and exciting flight feel when you get on the throttle. Obviously, every battery has a different curve and it comes down to the chemistry of the pack and also the construction of the pack. Um, if you've got a good chemistry, that will maintain a higher voltage. And if you have a good pack construction with a low internal resistance, that will also help to reduce the amount of voltage sag that you see. 
To kind of clearly show which packs are doing well, I've produced a chart of the voltage at the 50% point on the discharge curve. And this shows you that the Dogcom and the Bonker packs are leading the charge. They are maintaining a voltage of between 22.1 and 22.2 volts at that 50% discharge. Whereas the packs from Boss Lipo, Zot Power, CNHL, the FPV are maintaining a lower voltage anywhere from uh, about 21.9 volts up to maybe 22.1 volts. The Zot Power 1800s, again, are not performing well at all. They're sagging a lot, lot more. And we're looking at, you know, down at sort of 21 volts at the 50% mark. Um, 21 volts would, would be the point at which I would be looking to land. Um, so to see that voltage at only a 50% discharge um, really indicates that these packs are not going to be suitable for FPV applications. And also that the 120C rating um, is, is clearly inaccurate for the 1800s. Um, what's interesting is that the Zot Power 1500s don't seem to have the problem. So perhaps this is a batch problem with these particular 1800s. But I did test two of them and they both performed really, really poorly on this test. So we've talked about battery capacity and we've talked about voltage sag. But there's one more element to bring in and that's battery weight. It's very easy to make a battery with a lot of capacity and very little voltage sag if you use a lot of material. But that makes the battery very heavy and for FPV flight applications we care a lot about battery weight because we have to lift that weight around and that weight is going to affect how the quad flies, how quick it's able to accelerate, how fast it's able to turn. So we're really looking for the battery with the best energy density, the most energy stored in watt hours per gram of battery weight. And here we can see that we have two standout performers, the Dogcom Ultralight and the Boss Lipo S8. These batteries are not the best in terms of capacity and they're not the best in terms of voltage sag, but they're both very lightweight packs and that really helps them out in terms of energy density. And if you're an FPV pilot, that's probably what you care about most. Apart from these two standout performers, um, we've got a whole kind of range of batteries from the FPV, from Bonker, from Boss Lipo, even the CNHL Ultra Black that all sit in kind of the middle of the range and they're all doing pretty good in terms of energy density. Um, most of them up above 0.12 watt hours per gram. Then we get down to the Dogcom U-cells. These are Dogcom's um, less expensive packs. And you can see that they actually do really well in terms of um, voltage sag. They do really well in terms of power density, as you'll see later on, but they are a bit heavier. So um, that puts them a bit lower on the energy density curve, but they're also cheap. So, you know, there's that trade off there and they're still good performing packs. The Zot powers, however, are all sitting at the bottom of the of the chart here and that just indicates that they're not quite at the same level in terms of chemistry and pack construction as these other manufacturers. Um, and they've got a bit of work to do to catch up on that energy density metric. Obviously the 1800 milliamp hour packs doing the worst because, um, because you're really not able to get the full 1800 milliamp hours of capacity out of them. And the voltage was also sagging really badly. Now we're going to look at the results from the burst power testing and this data is the most exciting for racing pilots or dynamic freestyle pilots who are interested in getting the maximum performance out of the pack when they hit the throttle and punch out. The way we do the burst testing is we start off with a constant current discharge at 15C for 48 seconds. That means that we're discharging a 1000 milliamp power pack at 15 amps constant current. The reason we do this is to allow the pack to warm up to the condition that it would be in if you were flying. Obviously, we don't just want to do the burst test from cold because um, that's not representative of the condition the pack will be in when you're actually flying it. When you've drawn some current from the pack, you'll have warmed it up. That will energize the chemistry, that will reduce the DCIR of the pack, and that will improve its burst performance. And we want to take that into account with the testing. So we do 48 seconds of a 15C discharge to get the pack warmed up into a, a typical flight condition. And then we hit it with the burst, which is 2C per second. And we ramp the current. So for a 1000 milliamp hour pack, we're increasing the current at two amps per second. And we just keep going, increasing that current at a constant rate until we hit 3.1 volts per cell or 18.6 volts on these 6S packs. And then we stop the test. 
the longer a pack can continue along that ramp, the higher the effective C rate of the pack. So if you've got a pack that's coming out here, you know, 88, 89 seconds, that's doing much better in terms of effective C rate than a pack that's um, finishing at, you know, only 58 seconds. The most obvious result to pull out of the burst power testing is just the maximum power that the pack was able to deliver. This tends to favor bigger packs with higher C ratings. So it's no surprise that the Bonker Dandelion 1680 200C is coming out top on this test. Um, it's a big pack with a high C rating. There's a standout performance from the Dogcom Ultralight 1480 here, which delivered more than 2.5 kilowatts and beat out a lot of much bigger, heavier packs in terms of power delivery, which is really impressive to see. Um, then we've got a whole bunch of packs from Boss Lipo, uh, Bonker, Zot Power, all doing really, really well. Obviously, there's a range of performance here, um, and there's also some difference in performance where, where I've tested multiple batteries of the same type. There's always some variance pack to pack. The three batteries at the bottom, um, I would say are struggling a bit in terms of performance. Anything less than two kilowatts uh, for a modern 6S pack of this size is, is not doing so well. The VFPVV3, um, there's been a bit of a, a loss of performance compared to earlier versions of the VFPV packs that I tested before. Um, and the Zot Power 1800s are doing awfully on this test. They're the biggest packs, they should be at the top of the chart um, and they're at the bottom. Obviously there's something um, very wrong with these packs and they're not suitable for FPV applications if they're only to, able to deliver about a thousand watts. That's just not enough for um, racing or modern five inch freestyle. Now we're gonna talk about C rating because as we all know in FPV, the C rating printed on a pack is an important and reliable predictor of its performance. <laughs> I calculate C rate by dividing the maximum current that the battery is able to deliver during the burst test by its rated capacity. And this helps normalize um, packs that have smaller capacities and packs that have larger capacities. We can see that the Dogcom Ultralight is doing fantastically well in this test with a rating of close to 90 C, which is fantastic for any FPV pack. We've also got really good performances from uh, the Bonker Dandelion 1680, the Boss Lipo 1480, um, the Bonker Dandelion 1580, and both Dogcom U cells, which despite being um, only 1300 milliamp hours in capacity, are delivering a lot of current for their size, which is great to see, particularly as these are cheaper, better value packs. So to have them still be able to deliver 80 C on my test is really, really great to see. At the bottom end of the chart, we have the Zot Power 1800s that are still struggling and um, haven't performed well in any test so far. And the VFPV V3 also struggles with effective C rate. Um, it's only getting up to around 70 C when um, packs like the Dogcom U cell are getting up closer to 80. So um, a bit of work to do there on C rate. The final chart I want to show you is the power density. And here we're bringing weight into the equation. It's no good having a super powerful pack that's really, really heavy because um, your quad will still be slow to accelerate just because it's got so much weight to lug around. A really, really good performing pack will manage about 12 watts per gram in terms of power density. And that's what the Dogcom Ultralight 1480 achieves. 12 watts per gram, that is a fantastic performance and pretty much state of the art for LiPo batteries in 2025. If we're looking at a good performance, that would be about 10 watts per gram. And you can see that the Bonker Dandelions and the Boss Lipos, the Dogcom U-Cells all fit into that mix. The Dogcom U-Cell is really good um, to, to call out here because it's a very, very low cost pack. It's a value pack and it's still achieving 10 watts per gram, there or thereabouts, um, which, is, which is great for a lower cost pack like that. Any pack that's sort of achieving less than eight, I would say is definitely struggling. Um, the Zot Power 1800s are achieving four and are you know, just not suitable for a power application. The VFPV V3 is also struggling. I mean, seven and a half watts per gram is a little bit lower than I'd like to see. Hopefully they can bring that up in future versions. Um, and the Zot Power uh, 1500s are also, you know, they're just above eight, but they're still struggling on this test. Anything uh, 10 or higher, is a firm recommend for me with uh, 12 being state of the art. Now that we've looked at all of the data, it's time to look at the summary scores. And I calculate the scores by just dividing the energy density and the power density by the average performance for all the packs I tested today. The total score is just the average of the energy and power density scores. So super simple. 
Let's go from worst to best. And I'm gonna split these packs into basically three groups. The first group is I don't recommend. I don't recommend the Zot Power 1800. I think there is a quality control issue with these packs. Do not buy them under any circumstances. Zot Power, fix this please. The Zot Power 1500 is okay. If it's very, very cheap where you are and very available, it might be worth taking a punt on. But given the QC issues with the 1800, I'm hesitant to recommend the 1500 as well. So you're gonna make your own decision on that one. Then we've got a whole group of packs that I'm gonna put in my price and availability bracket, which is if they are cheap and available where you are, then they're good options. Do not pay over the odds for them. Buy them based on price and availability. So that's the FPV packs, the Bonker packs, the Bonker Dandelion packs, the Boss Lipo P7 and S8, um, the Dogcom U Cell, the CNHR Ultra Black. These are all good packs, they perform well. Price and availability are key. Don't pay over the odds for them. And if one or other of them is more expensive than the others, it, where you are, it's not worth it. Just buy the cheaper one. In the UK, Today, the Dogcom U cell is amazing value for the performance that you get, and the CNHR Ultra Black is way too expensive and don't buy it. Then we move on to the maybe the Boss Lipo S8, maybe not, but the Dogcom Ultra Light is definitely in what I would call the performance category, which is this is a premium performing pack, it's worth paying a little bit more for it. Not loads more, a little bit more. In the UK, the Dogcom Ultra Light retails about 25, 26 pounds. It's definitely worth that much money um, if you care about performance, if you're a racing pilot. If you are just a freestyle pilot, and for me personally, I'm gonna buy the U-Cells. If you'd like to see how these packs compare to all of the FPV batteries that I've tested before, and you don't wanna go back and scroll through previous YouTube videos, then all of the data is available on my Patreon. You can follow the link in the video description, Join today for less than the cost of a cup of coffee and you'll have all of that data, not just for batteries, but also for all my motor testing, my prop testing, uh, VTXs, everything. So please do follow that link and support me on Patreon if you possibly can.